As is uh, described in the Gospels, uh, I believe after his baptism, uh, Jesus goes to the desert to fast and pray for 40 days and 40 nights. And while he's there, uh, he, Lucifer uh, appears to him and tempts him constantly. Uh, and eventually, you know, Jesus, of course, you know, rejects those temptations. And eventually he makes his way back, um, you know, to Jerusalem and to his ministry. You know, newly, newly focused, newly energized, returns to the ministry and, and what we know as the gospel. Um, so I sort of decided that that was an interesting transition, you know, coming back from the desert uh, and into, you know, the, the active ministry. First of all, Ewan brings the stuff that, you know, the tools that he has. I mean, first of all, he's a good actor, period. He's very good. Um, and he's very smart and he, he you know, he's, he's very good with language, which matters to me. You know, uh, not all movie actors are good with language. He is very good with language. Um, and then beyond his, you know, his gifts as an actor, he just projects a lot of, you know, inner thought and complication and and a great deal, most of all, a great deal of empathy. That's why I always thought of him for, for this role, because not always, but when I thought of him, that's what I connected to, is the fact that he is so, as he is in real life, you know, he is interested in everything and in everyone and, and, in, and in things human. You know, he has a great deal of empathy and curiosity about lives and how people live. And I think that comes through, you know, his love for these three people that are strangers to him is evident. And he plays that with, with just a great deal of sensitivity. Regarding working with Chivo, you know, we, we worked before, you know, he shot my first movie and I was his camera operator on several movies. So we've worked for a long time. Um, you know, he said early on, look, we're never going to finish this if we carry big grip electric into the desert you know it's just going to be forever and it's a pain in the ass and we don't have the budget and also i think you know chivo has just you know over the last few years had worked a lot with terry malik and they shoot in a very free sometimes no lighting sometimes no rehearsing sometimes the scene is improvised so i think he's enjoyed working with such freedom then as a counter to that, he'd recently come off of Gravity, which was the opposite. It's extremely laborious, extremely technical, extremely dependent on 300 other people. Um, so I think, you know, he, we decided let's shoot it almost like a documentary. You know, for most of it, we did not have uh, lights and not even grip equipment. We didn't have like big, you know, 12 by 12 bounces or silks. We had no dolly. You know, we really went out there and picked the locations, shot them at the best times that we could, and, and almost shot it, you know, a cappella. I mean, there's still some lighting in the, some of the fire scenes, not all of them. And then we did one day inside a tent that has some lighting. But, you know, really 95% of the movie is just the natural light from the desert. With any movie, you just want the audiences, of course, to be engaged, you know, to feel that, that that the story uh, makes them feel and makes them think and, and keeps them interested. You know, I hope that, you know, uh, Christian audiences will uh, connect to something that is fiction, but where Jesus is portrayed in a way where his humanity is something they can connect to. Non-Christian audiences, I think, can see it more as a parable or as a literary conceit where you take a figure that you know from history and you put them in a, in a story that talks about fathers and sons and fate and whether destiny is written or you make your own destiny and, and death, etc. Um, but yeah, I mean, mostly you want people to be uh, engaged by it and, and hopefully, you know, think about it the next day, which is what I, you know, those are the movies for me if I'm still thinking about it a day or two later. Other than Ewan, the first person I cast, uh, cast was Ayelet Zurer. She's an excellent Israeli actress. I had, she had been in the original Betty Pool, which was the, seri the Israeli series that In Treatment was based on. So when I was doing In Treatment here, I was very familiar with her work on that series and always thought she was excellent. And there was a version of this movie that was once going to be photographed in Israel, so I immediately thought of her. 
And then we moved to the U.S., but I still wanted to work with her. You know, again, a very, very good actor, very smart, um, you know, really likes to get to the bottom of things, but then doesn't let that thought thing get in her way when the camera's rolling. It's all very much about emotion. I kept seeing online this great view of what turned out to be Fonz Point. And uh, Fonz Point is in the Anza Borrego Desert, just four hours from my house, you know, after looking all over the world. But I only had a picture of that view. So I visited and scouted uh, extensively um, and realized, you know, we had enough there to shoot it. And not only that, it looked like its own place. I was reluctant initially to shoot it in an American desert because it, it looked too American. I didn't want it to look like a Western if we shot in New Mexico or Arizona or in, um, you know, Death Valley or, uh, or um, in Utah. You know, I didn't want it to look like a Western desert. So most people who have not been to the actual Anza Borrego Desert don't recognize it.